All right. So today we're doing a deep dive on Andrew Tate and like how he made all his money. You know, it's kind of wild, right? The guy's everywhere online, like bigger than huge names, even Trump or PewDiePie. Yeah. It's a pretty fascinating, if not a little controversial story. For sure. For sure. We've got articles here, a whole bunch, breaking it all down, income streams, investments, even that Hustlers University thing he's got going on. But just mm -hmm. to be clear, we're zeroing in on the financial strategies here, not his personal views, right? Right. Just the business playbook. Exactly. Okay. So quick recap for anyone who's been offline for like five years. Tate, he was a kickboxing champ, right? Four-time world champion. But then boom, he pivots to online stuff and suddenly he's, what, a multimillionaire? It's an interesting trajectory. A lot of athletes, they struggle to turn that kind of success, you know, on the field or in the ring into lasting wealth. So how do you do it? Well, that's what we're going to dig into. Okay, so first up, and this one surprised me, the guy owns casinos. Casinos. In Romania, of all places. Mm -hmm. Not exactly what you think of with an online guy. Shows you the value of diversification, though, right? Most successful entrepreneurs, they've got their hands in multiple things. Spreads the risk. Makes sense. Makes sense. Then there's the whole online course thing, Hustlers University, though I think he rebranded to the real world now. Anyway, it's all about, like, teaching people how to make money online his way. And, of course, you can't forget about the social media empire he's built. Millions of followers across different platforms. But, you know, and the articles point this out. He's not afraid of controversy, in fact. Yeah. One article straight up says, weird to say, but he has always been popular for controversies, negative image, and luxury on social media. Like, is that replicable? Can you just, I don't know, be controversial on purpose and build a following like that? That's the million-dollar question, right? Controversy, it's a double-edged sword, attracts some people, repels others, high risk, high reward, which seems to be kind of his thing. He does, doesn't it? Yeah. But let's get back to like the actual money here, because mm. this Hustlers University thing, it's reportedly bringing in something crazy, like $12 million per month. Wow. That's a staggering amount. And you know, when you consider that the course costs $49.99 a month. Yeah. Well, they claim to have over 240,000 subscribers. If that's true, that says a lot about, one, their marketing, and two, the power of his brand. And it's not just some vague get-rich-quick thing, at least from what they show. Yeah. They've got courses on trading, crypto, fitness, affiliate marketing. It's a whole range of stuff. Right, and that's an important distinction. There are tons of those vague get-rich-quick schemes out there, but offering a more diverse range of content, that seems to be working for him. But it does make you wonder, is the real value in the content itself, the community aspect, or is it just, you know, the Andrew Tate show? It's like buying into a brand, like you yeah. said. And speaking of, he's big on this whole winner's mindset thing. One article quotes him saying, your thinking, your discipline, that's what determines your success, not just external factors. Sounds a bit like, I don't know, your typical self-help stuff. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's something to it. Well, that's the thing about a lot of self-improvement advice, right? It's often familiar ideas just repackaged in a way that clicks with a certain audience. And Tate's definitely found his audience. No doubt. But it's not all mindset, right? The guy's made some pretty interesting investments. Like why his early things was a webcam modeling company? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's actually pretty clever when you think about it. That industry, it relies so much on personal branding, online marketing skills that Tate clearly had and then used later for his info products. Interesting connection. Huh. I hadn't even thought about it that way. And then, of course, there's the Bitcoin stuff. Claims he turned like $600,000 into $12 million. Oh, yes. The allure of crypto. Got to remember, though, returns like that, not exactly typical timing, risk tolerance, luck. It all plays a part. Oh, and volatility. Bitcoin can be a roller coaster. Hmm. Plus, the article mentioned this was at an unspecified time. Probably not during a bear market, right? Exactly. Classic survivorship bias. We only hear about the big wins, not all the people who lost money. Good reminder to, you know, be careful who you listen to for investment advice, even if they're as, shall we say, flamboyant as Tate. For sure. Speaking of flamboyant, this might be a good time to bring up one of Tate's more um, extravagant ventures. Yeah, you really can't talk about Tate without like well, mentioning the lifestyle, right? Fast cars, private jets, mansions, it's all over his socials. It's part of the brand. Totally. And it's obviously a big draw for people who wouldn't want that life. And he's selling that dream along with like the roadmap to get there. Aspirational Marketing 101. <laughs> Whether you agree with his methods or not, you got to hand it to him. The branding is effective. 
But just to circle back to the business side for a sec, we talked about the casinos, the courses, but there's also this mention of a website he owns, no other details. It's super vague. Like, what does that even mean? The articles don't say, I'm kind of picturing some like super secret website, which knowing him might be the point. I think he does that on purpose. Yeah. The mystery thing. Could be. Adds to the whole mystique. I mean, this website could be anything, right? e-commerce, affiliate links, some kind of membership thing just shows you there's always more to these online empires than meets the eye. But one thing's for sure, the common thread in all of it is Andrew Tate. He's the product, the brand, the whole shebang. It's true. He's selling himself as much as anything else. Mm. And you mentioned earlier about him repackaging ideas. Like, is he actually saying anything new about making money? Or is it more about how he says it? Right. It's the age old question with this stuff. There's a million books and crushes out there all saying the same basic things. Work hard, be disciplined, invest smart. What Tate's doing, I think, is he's found a way to make those ideas resonate with a different audience, younger, more online. He's speaking their language, yeah. using social media in a way that, frankly, a lot of those older self-help guys haven't figured out yet. Exactly. He gets the whole digital marketing, personal branding thing. You can hate on him all you want, but you can't deny he's built something huge. Nope. And like they say, the results speak for themselves. But there's two sides to every coin, right? We've talked about the success, but where there's this much money, this much influence, there's usually controversy too. And Tate's got plenty of that. Oh, absolutely. And we'd be remiss not to, you know, at least acknowledge that side of things. It brings up a lot of questions about ethics, responsibility, the potential downsides of chasing wealth and fame. To be fair to him, he denies those allegations, right? <laughs> and he hasn't been charged with anything, but... It's only part of the story. It makes you think about the price of success, you know, and what responsibility you have when you've got that big of an audience. It's a lot to unpack. It makes you examine your own judgments, too. What are we willing to overlook when someone's entertaining or successful? Definitely something to think about. Yeah. So as we dig deeper into this guy, this like multifaceted, often contradictory figure, it's important to remember it's about more than just the money. Right. Okay. It's like, what's the bigger picture here? What kind of impact does a guy like this have? The ethical side of things, too. You can't ignore that. You're right. It's complex. I mean, on one hand, you've got this really interesting case study of like how to build wealth in the digital age. But then on the other hand, there's this whole other side about the downsides of fame and influence, especially when it's tied to so much controversy. And that's why it's so important to, you know, think for yourself. Just because someone's made a ton of money doesn't mean they're automatically right about everything or that you should follow in their footsteps. A hundred percent. You have to be able to look at things from all sides, really analyze the information you're taking in, what aligns with your values. That's what matters. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's like the one big takeaway you think people should remember from all this when it comes to Andrew Tate and, you know, his whole empire? What stands out most to you? Hmm, That's a good question. I think for me, it comes down to personal branding, the power of it, but also like how risky it can be. Tate's built this really polarizing image for himself, but you can't deny it's been effective. High risk, high reward, as they say. Makes you really think about the choices people make, right? What are they willing to do to succeed? And how does that impact everything else? Totally. It's a good reminder to be conscious of what you're putting out there and also what you're consuming online. Well said. From like kickboxing champ to this whole controversial online persona, Andrew Tate's story is definitely one for the books. Hopefully this deep dive gave you some things to think about you know, about online business, social media, and just forming your own opinions about it all. Thanks for diving deep with us, everyone. We'll catch you next time.